English pronunciation lesson 14 I'm here in the public library of Haverhill, Massachusetts and behind me is a very special fountain it's called the barefoot boy you know fountain is one of those words in English that has two pronunciations the standard pronunciation is fountain with a true T t fountain the other pronunciation is what you'll hear in fast speech fountain this is more typical of everyday informal English fountain how am I making that T in fountain that will be the topic of this lesson when I say the word fountain I'm using a glottal stop I've mentioned glottal stops before in a previous lesson on can and can't. If you can say two common expressions, uh-oh and uh-uh, then you can make a glottal stop. How do you make it? You need to use your throat. Inside here, you're going to cut off the air, cut off the sound. It's like holding your breath, but not with your lips, here in the back of your throat. Try holding your breath there. If you can hold your breath in the back of your throat, that's what you need to do to cut off the sound in fountain. How do you make the glottal stop? Let's review. Stop the airflow in your throat. Some people compare it to hiccups. The key is to try holding your breath not with your lips or tongue, but with your throat muscles. Then release the air by relaxing your throat muscles. The glottal stop is used in place of a T. Instead of the true T, fountain, we're going to take out the true T and use a glottal stop. Hold your breath in the back of your throat. When you hold your breath, that's the beginning of a glottal stop. Now hold your breath in the word fountain. Fountain. And now say it faster. Fountain. That's the glottal stop. When do you use the glottal stop? You'll learn as we do the first exercise. Exercise 1 Group 1. We use the glottal stop in these three common expressions. Listen and repeat. Uh-oh. This is an expression of surprise. Uh-uh. This is informal for no. Uh-uh-uh. This is an informal warning or reprimand. Group 2. We use a glottal stop before the sound N. That's an unstressed N sound. Listen and repeat. Fountain. Curtain. Button. Important. Group 3. We can also use a glottal stop before a final T. Listen and repeat. I can't. If you find it, call me. Let me know. Note, a final T isn't always a glottal stop. A final T can be a true T without a strong puff of air. Do you remember how to make the true T? What about the flap T? Let's review. I'd like to remind you how we make the true T sound. Remember, the key thing is the position of your tongue. We're going to use the tip of your tongue against the hard bump behind your upper front teeth. The tip of your tongue touches that bump. It stops the airflow. And then when it drops down, there's a puff of air, a release of air. T you can feel that puff of air if you put your hand in front of your lips. T -t. You should feel the puff of air on your fingers. Now, when T is at the end of a word, for example in good night, 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 there is a puff of air, but it's very weak. It's not as strong as the puff of air at the beginning of the word. Take, for example, the name Tom, T, Tom. You can feel the puff of air in T, Tom. But when I say good night, night, I don't really feel much air there. The tip of my tongue touches that hard bump. There is a release of air, but the puff is very weak. 
And that's the difference between a T at the beginning of a word and the T at the end of a word. Now the next thing to understand is that when T is at the end of a word, as in night, good night, Americans often change that T to a glottal stop. So now we're not even going to talk about a puff of air, strong or weak. We're not going to talk about the tongue touching that hard bump behind your upper front teeth. We're going to talk about a stop of air here in your throat. Instead of good night, you will hear good night. The T is cut off. The sound is cut off here. Good night. I'm not saying good night. There is a T. There is a sound after I. But it's a sound cut off here in my throat. Now the tricky thing is to remember all the different pronunciations T can have in American English. We've been talking about a true T, a T at the end of the words when there's less puff of air. We've talked about changing the final T to a glottal stop. Remember though, if a T is followed by an unstressed vowel sound, Americans will often change that final T to a flap T. Do you remember the flap T as in little? Well, consider the phrase good night. If it's followed by an unstressed vowel sound, that final T in night changes to a flap T. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Exercise 2. How are the T's pronounced in each statement? Example. In the statement, we see two T's highlighted in green. We have to decide how to pronounce them. The first one is a final T before a consonant sound, so we can use a glottal stop. The second is a T at the beginning of a word, so it's a true T. The statement is, what can Tom do? Now I'd like you to read these five statements using a true T, a flap T, and the glottal stop. Statement 1. You should have read, Betty needs a little help today. That's a flap T, flap T, and true T. Statement 2. You should have read, Patrick can't remember his doctor's name. That's a true T, a glottal stop, and a true T. Statement 3. You should have read, Tim and Kurt need to stop fighting over toys. That's a true T, glottal stop, true T, true T with less puff of air, a flap T, and a true T. Statement 4. You should have said, are you certain you want one? This statement has two glottal stops, certain and want one. The final T is followed by a consonant sound, w, one. Want one? Now let's do statement five. You should have said, stop it. That's a true T with not much puff of air and a glottal stop. Now a final note here. In this exercise we've been practicing the flap T and the glottal stop. These sounds are typical of everyday American speech. If you can reproduce it, wonderful. If you're having some difficulty or if you feel that your T becomes unclear as you try to make these sounds, it's best to go back to the true T. The goal is always to be understood. If you need to use the true T to be understood, do so. Instead of Betty, say Betty. Instead of Kurt, say Kurt. Exercise 3. Additional practice for the glottal stop. Watch, listen, and repeat. Jennifer will sew on a button. She needs to be certain the thread is long enough. Jennifer thinks it's important to sort through these clothes. A hat and mittens for her daughter. A 
hat and mittens for her son. A hat and mittens for herself. Note in fast speech and is often shortened to n. The curtains are closed. Jennifer opened the curtains and then straightened her shirt. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and happy studies. I offer my sincere thanks to Susan and the staff of the Haverhill Public Library in Haverhill, Massachusetts for allowing me to film on site. A copy of The Barefoot Boy, a poem by John Greenleaf Whittier, is available online.